I'm here with the coach of the Dutch team at the World Youth Championship. Uh, I am Robert Riss. Uh, Robert, I have been seeing you in a lot of chess-based DVDs. It's a pleasure to see you in person. It's my pleasure to be here with you, Sagar. So that's uh, that's nice. So how was the overall experience in India and how did the Dutch team do? How many yeah, people came here? Uh, we were here with uh, three uh, kids and me as a coach and one father of the kids. And um, so small group, but we, we did... Uh, yeah, okay, we had one girl under 14 who was very close to become uh, world champion, but um, yeah, just the tournament took uh, two days too long and um, yeah, it's a pity that she lost the last two rounds, otherwise she had uh, reasonable chances of becoming a world champion, but yeah, besides that, uh, I'm not uh, too unhappy about her play here, so uh, it's my private student, Elina Rubers. Yeah, Elina and, Rubers. Um, I, actually, she created quite some ripples because under 14 girls was a tough section with two 2300 plus girls from India yes and yet she was leading until round nine which is quite great yeah we uh, we were happy uh, she became already uh, the f uh, sixth in the European championship European championship in uh, in August and now sixth in the world uh, world youth so okay it's my task to develop her as a, as a player yeah. right. And so one of the things which you must definitely be doing with her is uh, calculation training. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, the thing is that actually maybe I've been doing this a little bit too much with her because even if it's a very positional uh, position, I mean, she starts calculating, yeah, even when there is no reason to, to calculate <laughs> anything. So, well, maybe I did something wrong, but no, okay, joking aside, I, I, I really think that it, uh, it's benefiting her as a, as a player, of course. And, uh, well, the, the material I use for my DVDs, obviously, I, I use in my uh, trainings as well. Yeah, so I would like to tell the viewers that Chessbase and Chessbase India have a lot of DVDs done by uh, Robert and uh, two in particularly, uh, two in particular have been doing really well. Those are calculation training and extreme calculation training. We'll come to the difference between the two in a bit, but first, uh, how about giving a position to the viewers to solve? All right, let's, let's do that. It's a game uh, played in 2018 in the Grand Cup Chess Classic in uh, Germany. It's a game of world champion Magnus Carlsen playing with the black pieces against uh, Georg Meyer. Okay. And I found it as a very instructive example, which I've been using in my trainings as well. Mm -hmm. So um, So which position should we go to? Uh, it's uh, after move 38 by, by black. Last move has been uh, King H8. And, well, this is position, uh, I think Georg Meyer was here in time trouble, okay. or, um, trying to reach move 40. And, well, if you look at the position, you see that he is a pawn down, but uh, definitely he has pressure um, with more active pieces, and the rook on g7 has been pinned. Um, I'm not really sure how short on time he was, but definitely he was in, under pressure. Um, and the funny thing is that, okay, in just... In this position, he, he just decided to, to play it safe mm. with a move rook a1. Uh, and basically, after black's next move, uh, I thought it was queen, uh, queen e7, um, you can simply take everything on g7 and regain your pawn on a4 and okay, the player settled for a draw. But that's not how you beat a world champion. That's not how you do that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, it's a difficult decision. So in general, I also recommend my students not to get in time trouble. You, yes. you need your time, especially in such moments. So better play a little bit more uh, optimistic in the earlier stages. I mean, if you look at the position, you'll see that white is better. White is pressing uh, and he has reasonable chances of building up an attack. So the critical move here. So can we ask our viewers to pause right now and think over here? Good. I was too fast, so ah, let's do that. The, yeah, so, yeah. so pause your video, try to find the best move for white or a best sequence of moves. And then once you are sure about it, you can resume and Robert will let you know the answer. Okay, Robert. So how, how does uh, the winning, is it winning position for white? It's, it's a winning position, yeah. Okay. Well, the most obvious move here for white is to play rook h1. Yes just to bring your last piece into the attack. I'm pretty sure that the Georg didn't play this move, as he should have been afraid of the move queen e7, which attacks the queen and basically it looks as if it's forcing the exchange of queens. Yeah. So what I'm teaching in my DVDs is that you should always look at forcing moves. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, both players here looked at the position 
uh, and they saw the, the right continuation, which is Rook takes h7. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about forcing moves, it includes checks, captures, and, and threats? Uh, gener or? Generating new threats, yeah, okay. that's uh, in, in, in that order. Um, I mean, you don't look at it in, in any position, but I mean, when you've developed your pieces, it, it, it should become as natural, yeah? yeah. Like you, you look at such kind of moves. So the first move which should come to your mind here is rook h7 because it's a capture, it's also a check. Yeah, it opens the, the king and it uh, generates new possible uh, yes. checks. So he must take it? He should take it, yeah. Rook h5, most logical continuation. And okay, I, I understand there are, there are two moves, king g8 and king g6, and it's not so easy to calculate everything. Yeah. Well, let's first look at King G6 because King G6 looks actually like there's not a good check here anymore. Yeah. Ah. I mean, if you play Bishop F5, you can simply take the rook, and there's not a good discovery with uh, everything with the is on the dark square. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this is not uh, leading anywhere. Yeah. So instead of Bishop F5, uh, I think both players admitted afterwards they missed White's next move, yes. which is also a forcing move. It's Rook H6. So that's a sacrifice on, a, on an empty square, which is always very difficult and it's a topic which I particularly dealt with in, um, in the second volume of my, uh, my DVD. Mm -hmm. Extreme calculation training. Um, so now again there are two moves, yeah? Two moves. He can take it or he can go to f7. Yeah, so well if you take on, uh, on h6, it's uh, queen h5 with, with checkmate. So yeah, Game over. So king f7 is, um, is the only move yeah. and okay. Here, even this position, I gave this position to many of my students. They were thinking here. They look at all sorts of checks. Yeah, so there is uh, yeah. queen f4, queen f5, bishop e6, bishop h5. But the, all those moves they're not leading to mate. There's only one move which is uh, leading to mate. Okay, so another puzzle for them. I mean, those who would have figured out right at the start, that's fantastic. Right. But yeah. uh, those who haven't done it... And it's fantastic, who, especially if you imagine that the world champion didn't see it, so... Yeah. So here, uh, well, my first intention, I, I mean, was to give bishop h5 check, because it looks... Yeah, but the problem is after uh, bishop uh, h5, you just hide with the king on g8. Yeah. And there is no, uh, no, more, no, checks. no more checks. Yeah. Uh, if you go queen f5, it's also king g8. So that, uh, yeah, that's the end of the story. And, bishop uh, e6 maybe? Yeah, bishop e6 looks very tempting. Because uh, you go here? You go there, and suddenly it looks as if the, those rooks, they're out of play. Uh, so you can continue with queen b8. But after queen d8, uh, you only have queen b5, king e7, queen c5, and it's a repetition yeah. of move. So that's only uh, leading to a draw. So, so the normal checks uh, do not work? Exactly. So uh, the difficult move here, I, I think, is that you go with the queen to the side, with, with queen h5. Yeah. I think it's a very difficult uh, check to, to see. I mean, once you move it, everything becomes clear. King g8, rook h8. Sure, yeah. Also, the difficult thing is that the rook just came from h5. So I think a lot of people have difficulties uh, visualizing the, the position ah. uh, it clearly. Well, right now, after King G8, it's Rook H8 with, uh, with yeah, checkmate. Yeah. So it's a nice... Uh, if Queen H5, there's no defense here. So in that way, King G6 is kind of refuted. Right. So, well, but it's, it's, it's a critical move because this is the only way which is leading to, to, to mate. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you should probably play uh, King G8. Uh, then... You play bishop e6 check, mm -hmm. so rook f2, f7. And, well, here there are uh, two... Uh, you can't move this rook because it's a mate. Good point, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, only this move. I only think. this move. And here a lot of people are struggling because they, of course, they consider to take the, uh, the rook on f7, but then you're a piece down. Yeah. Um, it's actually a very interesting line. Um, and it's also winning, uh, in fact. Uh, once again, if you take with the rook, it's check, uh, checkmate on h8. Yeah. And if you take with the queen, then there is queen b8, yes. queen f8, and there's a deflection uh, trick. Nice. Okay, 
Yes. And this wins actually. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, because you also at the end win the eight bishop. Right. Can't do rook g8 because that's a mate. The line even continues. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's nice. Now, okay, I, I show you that after bishop takes f7, mm. there's king takes f7. And even this position, a lot of uh, students are struggling to find. Uh, so it's, it's quite a deep uh, exercise with a lot of hidden uh, resources. Yeah. So obvious moves here are queen f5 and rook f5. Yeah, this and this. Yeah, uh, the problem is that after queen f5, you, you just go um, uh, to, to g8, mm -hmm. and there's nothing... Uh, Maybe check here, but uh, then he comes up then you Then you come back. Actually, yeah. you, you, you can take on a8, maybe. Um, yeah, this could be a possible... Mm. But I was thinking if king f8... Uh, oh, sorry, this, sorry this I, I made a mistake. Works? Queen f6. Yeah, yeah, queen f6. Yeah, exactly. And, and, then, you go, and then you go back. No, no, sorry, uh, with the queen, you go back to e7. Ah, okay. Can and I go back here or it's... Uh, I pick up the bishop. Yeah, uh, then, but, okay, just... Uh, queen, queen e8, sorry. Queen e8, queen, queen f8. Queen e8, ah, I have to and go rook back. H8. And then this yeah. is winning. So, I must play queen e7 and then you have a, an additional check here, but... Uh, the king goes to g6. Yeah, and, and this your looks piece down. Okay. Yeah. So... It's an obvious move, but unfortunately it doesn't work. Okay, the, and also after rook f5, you just go king g6. And it's, uh, it's over with the fun. Yeah. But here you need that willpower to actually... Uh, to, to look at to look. All, all the forcing, forcing continuations. So, uh, it's a very surprising move. It's a backward move with, uh, with a queen, as you need to go with a queen to f4. This is counterintuitive, yeah? yeah? I mean, it looks tough. like you're going in the wrong direction. Um, the difference is that if you go now to g6, you don't have a rook on f5, so you can play queen f5 with, with checkmate. <laughs> and also if queen f6, you have now rook f5. So the fifth rank is still available for, uh, for the rook, yeah. Uh, if you go to the e file, so king e8 or king e6, it's rook, rook e5. Yeah, you lose the queen. As a minimum, probably queen b8 is also also good. Yeah. And if king g8, then you have... Uh, then you go to b8. Yeah. And you lose the queen in this variation, or yes. else you pick up the bishop. Else you pick up the bishop, and okay, you, you're left in a hopeless position. Hanging, yeah. Position with major pieces and uh, exposed king. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a pretty tough one. I mean, it's hard to blame Georg Meyer not to find this all over the board. Yes. But I found it as a very instructive uh, example um, to use for various uh, strength of players. I mean, I use this with 1400, 1500 players, but uh, not from the beginning. Yeah, you can you can use it as an Phase exercise. Phase it out. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, if this puzzle was to be put in one of your DVDs, would it go in calculation training or extreme calculation? Uh, it's, it's a good question. I didn't put it in one of my DVDs because this game was played after. Yeah. Um, but actually both... Uh, well, first of all, we saw already this... Uh, we talked about forcing moves, which is what I discussed in the first uh, DVD. The second DVD, extreme calculation, I also deal with backward moves, sacrifices on empty squares. So it's a little bit different, but I try to elaborate in the Extreme Calculation DVD on various other topics uh, as well. Um, so it's a bit of everything. Um, I think you, you should watch both DVDs, um, because in the first DVD I basically talk about forcing moves, uh, method of elimination. So you have a couple of candidate moves and you, you see one is not working, you go to the next one and, and so on. I think that all kind of techniques, techniques, and um, yeah, you need to be able to apply. So, yeah. and so, so elimination, elimination, uh, and forcing moves and all is in the first one. What about the second one? The second uh, one is about um, sacrifices on empty squares, backward moves, intermediate moves. Okay. Um, tougher concepts. I believe it's a little bit tougher. That's why we choose the title of extreme. Yeah. Um, uh, but, okay, I, I also often get the question for which kind of level uh, it is, made this DVD, and 
Well, frankly, it's I try to use my exercises for both 1400 players as well as international masters or even grandmasters. Yes. It's not an idea just to sell better as much as I can, but I really believe that uh, everybody can learn from it. And yeah. um, I believe the, the concepts, they, are, they can be applied at, at, at any level. Fantastic. And uh, one of the advantages you have as compared to other people is that you actually have used this material with sure. your students before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's why I, I believe that my my positions, the positions I use, my content, it's uh, it's working out well. It's difficult, and I know. It's, you know the it's, common mistakes that the players will make. Yeah. Also in the DVDs, I, I often mention uh, wrong moves, so I don't give only the solution. I try to also discuss typical mistakes uh, made by by uh, club players, and uh, yeah, that's what I what I do also yeah. to discuss certain uh, thinking tech uh, techniques. Um, just to um, yeah to let the the viewer improve their uh, calculation uh, abilities. Sure. So are you are you planning to be something like Mark Doretsky, who was an <laughs> IM who who didn't want to become a GM but was one of the finest yeah, trainers? Yeah. Well, in the actually, world. actually, I I really like teaching. Uh, I come from a family with uh, as my both parents uh, both my parents were teachers, not in chess, but. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I really like, I really also enjoyed coaching here and I, I think I, I, I do have the skills to, to, to uh, pass over my knowledge to, to young people, but also to other interested people. Yeah, so I like it. Uh, do but, you have uh, any GM norms or? Uh, as a player, you yeah, mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I came uh, close a couple of times, uh, but then, okay, so life is changing at some point. Yeah, you become a play from a player, you become uh, trainer, organizer, that's what I'm doing nowadays. Uh, but yeah, the ambition is still there. And, uh, ah, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you keep it for the rest of your life, yeah? So <laughs> it's <laughs> in hope, your blood, yeah. I hope that doesn't happen and, and that you ab you're able to, you know, when you train some good students, your chess level also improves. It motivates, so. it really motivates. I mean, I, I was working here with the Dutch kids and, uh, well, I'm preparing for them, so I also worked on my own openings yeah. uh, indirectly. So. Um, yeah, it, it motivates, but now the, the second problem is how to find some time to, to play and uh, find an excuse to leave my girlfriend at home. Yeah, <laughs> No, just kidding. <laughs> right, so I would like to tell the viewers that if you would like to get this Extreme Calculation and Calculation DVDs, both of them, the links are in the description. And also, if you would uh, like to see all of what uh, Robert has made for Chess Base, there are uh, DVDs like Mating the Castle King. How yes, it, uh, the, uh, also uh, the Mating volume on um, Weekend King side, King in the center. Um, also strategy uh, training. So yeah, basically, how to make a plan. yeah, yeah, that's basically it's the same concept. Uh, what I did with calculation, I also did with uh, strategy. Um, yeah, also used in my. Uh, uh, trainings with uh, with my students. Fantastic. And if you would like to get in touch with him, we'll also put the e his email address in the description. Robert, thank you so much for your time my and pleasure. showing this very interesting position to us. Uh, and I hope that you enjoy your remaining time in India, whatever it is. It's uh, fantastic here. So, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm going home tomorrow, uh, yeah. day after tomorrow, but uh, India is a great, great country. I uh, asked your student, what do you like to eat? And he said, uh, I mean, she said, uh, naan, yeah? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. so uh, I also really like the food, but okay, I have to admit that I'm also looking forward to the Dutch food again, but I will not bother you with that. So. Yeah, okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, thanks. See you.